You know, Lakers lose. Huh? They didn't lose yesterday. No, they ain't lose yesterday. They even play yesterday. Look What's at the you. record? Two on one. This nigga pick a different team every every year, man. Who pick a different team every year? I saw you like, I only been here for one year. Let's saw away and I was rocking a different team yesterday. What team was it? You got sign. You got you got sign a bandwagon release for him. That releases you from the last team. What you team for? was I jacking? Act. Tell me. I forgot. Cause you're lying. I don't remember. You're I don't lying. remember. Either or. You only mentioned like the Lakers once, and then when they started losing, never heard about them again. You're a lie. What's good, guys? Welcome back to The Struggle. Nadeska Academics, Wayno here. What's good, my friends? What's good? What's poppin'? You just add lib add lib in the intro every time. We're changing the name, what we do. I What's literally say on? Everyday Struggle 95% of the time, and once in a while I say The Struggle because somehow it irritates you every time. That's the only I time you notice this. Literally. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm just trying to make sure things around here stay the same. Yesterday, mad people came in early. Today, ain't nobody here. You know what I mean? <laughs> We're back to back our to normal. Usual, you know what I mean? I just gotta just make sure us. things don't get too spooky. Out here. Spooky. So where things really got spooky this weekend was at the Mala Luna Festival in San Antonio. So Guap Dad 4000 and Russ got into a fight backstage and some of it was captured on video. Take a look. All right, so if you guys aren't super familiar with Guap Dad 4000, he was all over Revenge of the Dreamers 3 on some of the dopest songs, including Wells Fargo, one of my favorite. And he just dropped another project called Dior Deposit. So on it, he has a track called Prada Process. And there's a line that says, you doing right, but we don't care. We call that doing Russ. So after this video clip surfaced, Guap Dad hopped on Instagram and explained uh, his side of the story. He said Russ basically hit him when he wasn't looking. Hey, I'm Guap Dad 4000, and I got an altercation with you, Russ, from New York, wherever you from in that area, you thought it was cool to ask me to talk to me about a song that you didn't like that's on my album, Dior Deposits. You said, hey, let's talk about this song, bro. I said, cool, I'm on the phone with my brother. I turned around and you snaked me, then ran in your trailer and had your security try to beat me up. Your security couldn't get me, so your partners tried to chase me and then they got beat up by the fence because I'm not a weird nigga. And I'm a nigga that fight. I'm a nigga from Oakland, California, Russ. All right, so Russ hopped in the comments on Academics page because, of course, he's always in the middle of the drama. He said, you mentioned somebody's name in your song in a negative light and they walk up on you and punch you in your mouth. That's not getting snuck. You should know what time it is. So Guap Dad said, the video clip does not tell the whole story. He challenged Russ to another fight on camera and said, the crazy thing is, I actually DM'd Russ a while back and told him the line on Prada Process wasn't a diss. He read it and kept it moving, so in my mind, we had no problem, and now... We're here. All right, so let's start with the video, right? I'm always really bad at watching fight videos and understanding what's happening. There's too many people. So what do you guys see in the video? I see Russ pop on Guap Dad. Like, it looks like Russ punches him and then somebody pulls Russ back. Well, she got already the point of the whole video. Uh. It's just too many people. I think I think that's Russ's point. Yeah, we didn't, I didn't come with like 20 people over here just to like, you know, <laughs> let's discuss the song. No, you know what time it is. Hey. You know, Russ is like Italian mob boss out here, you know, okay? If you've been mentioning his name in the song, you've been listening on social media, when he pulls up with like 50 Nigerians and they're wearing like earpieces, just assume. He <laughs> said, Nigerians wear earpieces. Sorry. <laughs> so, <laughs> was this. An acceptable response. So we have a fan question. Uh, should an artist on Russ's level even pay attention to what a newcomer has to say about him? In a way, Russ's fight put me onto Guap Dad's music. I do fuck <laughs> with Guap Dad. I'm a fan. I'm but not gonna lie. I never heard of this Guap Dad dude I've before. been saying his name to you for weeks now. You never, you never heard of him? No, no I never like, heard of his own music. I've, I've never even seen the kid. you never seen... No, Russ like, has just beat him into a career. Wait, no, no, no. Wait All right, that's a stretch. At, at least, but... No, no, at least, like, Russ is putting me on. Okay. Like, I'm, I'm now looking him up. I'm like, oh, shit, he dropped an album? He's okay. nice, though. I kept you never seen him you. go viral when he used to do the shit, like, dropping the $100 bills on himself, saying this is his birthday and all of that shit? You never seen that? Talk no. about his scamming past, finessing Drake into... Is that how his normal voice is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, I yeah. beat into no, no, no. To a different vocal tone. He like, has hella he personality. Like, That's his hi, voice. Hi, my name is Guap Dad. Hi, Russ, you just beat me up. Okay, I'm like, okay. oh, shit. Besides the point. Nah, for real. 
Oh, so so he's like people. So he's going viral because he mentioned something about him being like a meme, and I'm like, I, yeah. I don't know what he's talking about. I'm not I'm not that familiar with him. Not a lot of his videos that he used to do is like meme videos, and he used to do a lot of he used to do like crazy shit like drinking henny mad early in the morning. Walking around outside with robes on. <laughs> he says, He has his own line of do rags. I yeah. just got one last week. For real? There's a lot so, of personality. I, I didn't, I, I knew who Guap Dad was for a long time, but I didn't know that he did music until last year because I've been seeing him for years. Yeah, so it's like he's been around for a while and I think he had some music out and then being on Dreamers 3, I think gave him some more exposure and then he just dropped his own project. Mm. Somebody else has said it's like, not bad. He got a dope record with Charlie Wilson and Chance the Rapper. Yeah, Gucci you know? pajamas. Somebody else said like he he like finessed Drake. Yeah, he yeah, does, yeah. He but... does like scam rap, so he finessed Drake to like perform in like something of his, which yeah. is I don't know. He that came works. up scamming, and that's anyway. Generally speaking, very very cool dude. Makes good music, but this is this. Does this make sense? Like, should Russ be running up on people at festivals because of a line? Russ is gonna run up. Like, I I think that like Russ just I I didn't even really understand like where the line went wrong. Like, I don't I don't get where the line, like, disrespects him or something like that. There's but, a little deeper context, because if you if you go a few lines back, it's like, if, if you, you got to listen to the, the bar in context. Yeah. He's basically, like, shitting on, not necessarily Russ, but he's shitting on whoever, like, is kind of aimed at. It's probably not one person, but he's just basically saying, you ain't shit, like, you're losing, we could go at it like this, we could go at it like this. You think you winning? No. You're doing Russ. Oh, so, so he, because it, people used to call Russ an L. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he, Russ is probably listening to the, the joint like, damn, you dissing whoever. Like, you're probably some random nameless person. But mm -hmm. now you throw my name into it, you're calling the guy pussy, he can shoot it out, he can do this. Like, he mentioned certain things. Of course, he's not talking to Russ. But just Russ's name in there as a fucking sprinkler. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like a little sprinkler. Nah, man. I, Russ is tired of that shit. I think. <laughs> he's tired of that shit. And so even if he DM'd him about it? Now, honestly, I, I think Russ is still going through the thing where you feel like you've been bullied. Mm -hmm. And now that you realize, you know, uh, wait, so y'all really will, like, diss me and then we happen to be at the same festival and, like, y'all have two people with you? Like, again, Russ clearly... Russ believes an overwhelming force. Yes! And he's <laughs> on the fucking Forbes list. Yo, what happens is, I think once he got it off on Smoke Perp mm -hmm. and then... He saw even a situation with what was it, a young bands. He started to realize a lot of the artists who are dissing him, they aren't like Schoolboy Q and like Kendrick. You feel me? They're like the up and coming kids who are who are using that as a joke, just like fans use it as a joke. Now you're not gonna beat up fans. That's really corny, right? But if you're an up and coming rapper who's gonna be in a festival, that's why all of these rappers are, are getting called like in a festival. He beat the niggas ass at headline the festival. I mean, anybody's subject to getting their ass whooped if they're being disrespectful, fan or not. Well, well, I mean, if y'all are in a festival setting, yeah. it's the easiest way to get to a motherfucker. Yeah, I mean, right? I, like, Especially, listen. yo, it looked like because I watched the video like eight times. Yeah. Well, actually, eight hundred. But um, <laughs> Guap Dad looked like he he had two people with him. He had one white guy. The white guy was scrapping. He couldn't <laughs> do too much. He was getting tossed around like mayonnaise. But at least he was trying. Man, there was another guy he was like with. Mayonnaise. Another guy he was with, like, tried to come outside of the trailer, and, like, two big dudes, like, stood there, like, you want to come out here and end up like him? And the dude was like, yeah, I got it, man. And it was just him. So he really was with, I'm, I'm guessing, like, three people. Russ had, like, 20. Okay. But so, if you're not the headliner, they probably just gave him two tickets. Like, yo, Russ, uh, Guap Dad was the first performer on that day of the festival. Okay, if you have a problem with something someone said in their song about you and you're going to pull up, should you be pulling up with security? So Guap Dad is saying... What? He wants <laughs> one on one. No, I want to hear from Wayne. Wayne, what's the pull-up rules in, in rap? <laughs> what's the pull-up yeah, rules? Yeah, yeah. Tell me pull-up rules in rap because you have a lot of friends who are rappers who are who are a little. They, they get into the contact sport part of it. Yeah. You now establish the rules that we could judge them when when it happens. Um, no pressure. Well, back in my day, you know. Now, I, I don't think that you. I don't know, yo. Most people I know don't really deal with security like that. Like, they don't really have too much security. I think, like, if you got a problem, you definitely should pull somebody to the side and address it. I just don't like the social media aspect of it. Mm -hmm. Like, if I'm pulling up on you and I turn around, first thing I'm going to say is, yo, and you with me, yo, put your camera away. Because I also, like, I'm, I'm going to tell you, put your camera away because, honestly, I don't know if this nigga's going to sue me or not after we do whatever we do to him. I don't want to go to jail and I don't want to get sued. So, me personally... I think that you should pull up however you want, 
as long as there's no Yo, camera. you might have to hire someone in the crew specifically to tell everyone to put their cameras away. Yeah, That's yeah, yeah. But your security should do that. Your security should, should be like, yo, y'all niggas put your cameras away. Like, put your phones away. What the fuck? <laughs> what? <laughs> you need to hire somebody to get the footage. That's the point. Nah, yo, man. Yo, these, like, these, like, like and, and, and let's draw that distinction, right? All right. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of real, real life, maybe even deadly violent um, altercation that happened in hip hop where, you're not seeing, seeing like a fucking, somebody just has, this is orchestrated. You feel me? Yo, they're going to be over there talking, get the angle from over here. When <laughs> shit pop off, we going to get it. Clearly, this is one of them joints where like, yo, just get the footage in case this motherfucker lies about it publicly. And, and honestly, I'm just saying, I don't know how I found the footage. But after Guap Dad confirmed or was trying to give his, his details of how it went down, mm -hmm. Just say the video may have not aligned with everything he said. That's how the video came out. It came about. Wait a minute. <clears throat> Do you have? You're the only person who had the video originally. I, I don't know. I don't. I don't know. It just so happened hold on, hold on. Did a, <laughs> did a neutral party send you the video, academics? Or did it come from one side that's trying listen, to? Don't act like you don't be telling. You no, can tell now. All all all, this is a, my my. No, today's I'm a, I'm a journalist, and my journalist obligation says I can never reveal. Cut it sources. out. True. Even if I get indicted. Actually, what? And then, <laughs> so no, for real. Talking about you have a certain <laughs> amount of like fucking um um leeway to not reveal your sources okay. unless it's like <clears throat> some has to be like some national. Okay, emergency. fine. So when they sent you the the video, was there a message with it? Don't you don't have to say who sent it. Chris Broussard ass nigga. No, no, no. You Chris no, no, Broussard no, ass nigga. What? Like it reminds me of other situations, right? Like um, shit. Like I've seen other situations where. The videotape only surfaces when there's something something that is incorrect happening. Like honestly, I heard that there's a videotape of uh, of, of hey, don't kill me mixed people when they ran down on, on um what was somebody's name Drake's legend goes right Quentin Quentin, but Quentin came out and just fessed up like yo they called me lacking bro. Mm. They don't videotape that need to come out because honestly, and this is what I'm saying these type of incidents is to kind of yo like. It's a, it's a teach somebody a lesson type of thing. You get me? This is not like the young boy versus whoever it was at with Rolling Loud where niggas is doing too much. And you hope it doesn't get there. But So do you feel like a lesson was taught here or will some other rappers look at this as an, a way to bait I think the, the only future? lesson that comes out of this is keep Nick Russ' name out your mouth. In a negative way. Like, like, I, like... I'm, but I think that's what it comes from what Ak was saying. He tired of like people was using his name so long for the L shit. And if you say something that he don't like and he has access to you, you're going to feel it. But I also think it's not very fair to grab that in a sense because I, I don't think that needed to happen. Mm -hmm. Like even for, for how he how you explain the bar, like how it goes in the context, I think that like it didn't have to go all the way there. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But it did. So it, it, it doesn't make a difference now. But like it, it didn't have to go there. It didn't. Yeah, and also, mm -hmm. you know, I guess, you know, like you have to remember what hip hop is. <clears throat> so like, again... I don't think if G Herbo mentions Rust's name, not that he would mention Rust's name like that, that that's happening. Academics. No, I mean any rapper, like 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 certain certain type of rapper. If Young Boy, G Herbo, Young Boy, like the certain type of rappers, I feel like that's not happening. So I do think that Russ is kind of smart with like, okay, really smoke perp? Okay, I got you, bro. You know what I mean? Like, wait, guap that? But all of those guys in that in that in that field don't really I don't I don't really hear nobody say they have a dislike for Russ like as far as rappers, like you don't even with those guys like you don't really, I'm I, I'm not saying nothing bad about Russ, but I don't think NBA Young Boy even probably know who Russ is. But it's not about that, right? Like if 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 you were becoming the butt of like pretty much everyone's joke, and they're literally changing the perception about you, that new audiences. Won't even take it serious. They already think about the perception that's being created by those other guys. Yeah. Again, it's one thing if it's just fans, but if you're both in the same industry, it's like literally someone's taking food out of your mouth. You know? And shit. When shit, I heard. I heard. Meek said. I remember. He, I can't remember. It was. I think it was during the Drake beef, and it was like, yo, he takes some of that shit personally because he's like, yo, you taking food out of my off my plate. That's how I feed my family, especially if you're another artist. You get me?
Fans is fans, so... Fair enough, but in this case, seems like Russ is doing very, very, very well for himself. I don't know that... You probably think he could do a little bit better. <laughs> <laughs> you never nah, he just don't want no... He ain't try, try, try to tolerate no type of disrespect. Well, look, hopefully they work this out and they could just have a conversation about it. I don't think we need another fight video. Uh, both very talented guys. Go check out Dior Deposits. Yeah, that and, is nice. And, a, and after the fights, please don't explain yourself. Like, please, like, please don't make videos explaining yourself. Like, that, that's the only thing I think Guap Dad should have never did. Like, everything he said after that... It don't even but matter. But just then, like, do you not respond? You just let it die down. I mean, we per this the thing. If you if you want to fight somebody, if you want to do something, why are you talking about it? That, that's that's what Russ ain't say nothing. Russ ain't put up a video saying, "Yo, Guap Dad, when I catch you, it's gonna be a problem." He just saw him and he did what he did. I don't think that like nobody's gonna have a boxing match after the fact. No, no, but I think he had to. You gotta, you gotta, you have to change the narrative before the video just drops. Like you know, it's, it's like when Charmaine gets hit going into the Breakfast Club. Bro, he gave us the breakdown already by the time we saw the video. We're like, okay. You know? Like, you, you got to soften the blow. So I respect what he was trying to do. Yeah. You know? I guess. Ferragamo Falcon. <laughs> <laughs> He's like Shia LaBus down. He has so many nicknames. That was my favorite one. All Shia right. LaBus. Let's move on, man. Hopefully you guys work this out. So T.I. stopped by the Breakfast Club this week. Uh, you guys remember pretty recently he was talking about Iggy Azalea saying working with her was one of the biggest blunders in his career. So he kind of doubled down on that and explained further. I got to introduce another female to the game that can undo the blunder of Iggy Azalea. When she found out white people liked her and she didn't really need black people mm -hmm. to like her anymore, she switched up, started mm -hmm. acting different, made moves that I wasn't proud of. She was very arrogant about it, you know what I mean? And I feel like that energy, mm -hmm. you know, led to motherfuckers like, ah, we ain't fucking with that. The raps were dope at first. Of course, she had... Writers. Help. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then she exposed herself so much, and you know, and it just... With the Sway Freestyle? All of it. It undid all the good that was done. All right, so last time Iggy did respond, and then she deleted it. Same this time. Uh, one of them, she said, when will this guy shut up? The only song you were a part of making was 100. 100. He never said that he wrote nothing for her. Like I watched the whole interview. He never said that he wrote her records. He just said that she had help. And he didn't he didn't say that to 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 diss her or nothing. He just was like, yeah, she had help. I understand what he's saying in the context of like how when she felt that, you know, white people liked her, that she didn't need she didn't need like hip hop or, you know what I mean? She didn't need hip hop culture. But at the same time, you was ushered in by, by um, T.I. Mm -hmm. Now, I mean, I, I thought Iggy was going to be a top star for a long time because Fancy was a fucking big, a really, really big record. But <clears throat> like he said, she started exposing herself with like her trying to do the freestyles or her say, like saying and people was just looking at it like weird. And in the tweets, I think that Iggy's undoing was by her own hand. Mm -hmm. Like it was by her own hand. Um, but T.I., like, he didn't, I, I watched the whole interview, he didn't really say anything to shit on her. I mean, he just was basically saying what he felt went on, and he says that he wants to put on another female that could undo that mark on his career. So, mm -hmm. I, and it's not like he just brought her up. Charlamagne asked him a question. Okay. You know, so. T.I. ain't saying nothing wrong, but I still think T.I. is doing too much. And I do think this will pass because he's on a press run, um, really, for his podcast expeditiously. And why, though? I mean, why you think he's doing too much? Because... You were never this vocal. Like, it feels, to me, it comes across, and I can understand why she's like, damn, why won't you shut up? In terms of, nigga, you were all quiet and supportive when you were making money with me. Now that you ain't making money with me, now, you, now you're basically echoing what everybody was saying. I get it. Granted, you took all the bullets then, and he's correct. T.I. did. But if you didn't have anything to say either privately or publicly back then, like, don't come out now and be on your little press run, like, just shitting on me. Well, because when it was beneficial and it, it was it was lining your pockets, cool. Mm -hmm. You know, and that happens a lot in hip hop. Niggas will ignore some shit that's not right because it lines your pocket. The minute it doesn't, they're speaking out like the Martin Luther King. Like like let's not act like you weren't with it, even though in the in the midst of yeah. everybody calling it out, <clears throat> you, you were with it. Well, I think the reason why she's even becoming a subject of conversation is because he has that show with um, Cardi B. And it's like a talent search show mm -hmm. looking for a star, and they asking about putting the artist on. So it's in it's in with within the narrative of who he is and what he's done as far as a CEO. Mm -hmm. So I don't think he's just just doing too much. Like 
and I do get what you're saying, but at the same time, it's like, is he not supposed to tell his side of the story and not supposed to say his part of his... Like he said, I'm speaking my truth. I'm not speaking down to her. I'm just speaking about what I went through or what I felt about that then. Of course, you're not going to be disowning her out in the public because I'm pretty sure when she was going through all that stuff that she was going through, he was trying to fix it, mm -hmm. you know? But now, things are different, you know? Well, as, as much as he's giving her blame, I think he should also take blame as well. He's, he is taking blame. <clears throat> Not really. He's the blame he's saying. He's saying this is the biggest mistake I've had in my career well, blunder. as a CEO. Right there, yeah. But, but in, in terms of, we see this all the time where somebody will propel or co-sign somebody not of the culture and that person not of the culture like does destructive or like b takes us steps back mm -hmm. in, in terms of progress. And the person who's doing all that, that's co-signing them, they're lying their pockets. They don't really care about the ramification until their pockets aren't being Well, I would just, I wouldn't say that he didn't care at the time, right? Because he did make it a point to say he was trying to fix a lot of things and then her team would come back and undo things and make it worse. You know what I mean? But I understand your point, though. Maybe after this press run, he doesn't mention it again. Yeah, I, I just feel like it's kind of, like, if you didn't say then, we as critics who weren't, weren't making money with her, mm -hmm. like, Fine, we, we should have that opinion, but for you to just only now want to be like, all right, cool, let me keep talking about it. That's why I think really after a couple more interviews, like he's done with it. And I'm hoping so because it's not fit. Like, listen, let her flop in peace. I'm not defending her at all. Like, she's not really hot, let her flop in peace. But like, to now jump back on the side of, oh yeah, of course I'm down with y'all. Yeah, she's wilding. Like, nah, you weren't down with us when she was going through. Um, a lot of problematic things that you were really taking the bullets for her. And really, you were taking the bullets for her, not because you were riding with her. It's because it could have benefited you and lined your pockets. Let's be honest. Uh, I guess academics. All right. <laughs> how, how about this one? All right. So you guys know a lot of those, like, top greatest rappers of all time of Atlanta have been going viral. And T.I. made his own. I think he was the top 50 rappers of all time on his Expeditiously podcast. So he did put Tupac over Jay-Z when he ranked them. And apparently, Hove had questions about this. Yeah. Now you put you Pac know. over Hove. Why? Why was that? Oh, you know what? Hove called me. Mm -hmm. We were talking about something else, you know, <laughs> something else completely non-related. You know what I'm saying? And then this, and then he said, "Oh, and by the way, you really believe that?" Mm -hmm. And I said, "Yeah, yeah, I do." When it comes to impact, I do. You know, Pac is like the hip hop Michael Jackson. You know that, right? You can go anywhere, mm -hmm. any part of the globe and say Tupac, right? And they gonna sing a Tupac song. Jay, as much as we love him, in other parts of the globe, as many parts of the globe as you can for Pac, mm -hmm. is not the same instant, like, they don't, they don't just go to reciting Jay records like that. I don't think we did a deep dive into his list at the time, but would you guys agree? Um, it, it, Impact, I think, Tupac, uh, Tupac had a lot of great songs. I don't consider Tupac one of the like greatest rappers in technical terms, like as far as like how he rap. But I think Tupac's message was is so much larger than his music that that's what makes people appreciate his music more. You know, um, I don't I don't put him over Jay only because I don't think he was a, a, as good of a rapper as Jay. Mm -hmm. But his impact is definitely like global and worldwide and i think that it goes along with him passing away too like also tupac showed a lot of vulnerability you don't get that from artists i think that's why people love him so much is because they were so able to relate to him he was a everybody used to give him uh flack for being like a contradictory person a, a contradiction but i think that that's what made him so dope was because he was a walking contradiction he did feel like he wanted to destroy the world and he wanted to save it mm -hmm. and i think that's how everybody usually feels sometimes but I think um, that's why he's so impactfully global. Mm -hmm. But I do agree that on a global scale, that you know that he might be more impactful than Jay. Right. Mm -hmm. So, so you do agree, at least, because he made this point, <clears throat> and to me, I, th I thought it was a very noteworthy point where he said, in every, just globally across the globe, in more countries than every in any country that knows Jay Z would know Pac, and there's probably more countries that know. Pop that may not know who Jay Z is, and I think that speaks wonders about how just the impact and influence of of Pac when he's been dead for so long, and and Jay Z has been still within the music industry for the time he has, 
and that guy says no more. Now, I, I forgot the top five list that, that, that he put out, and, and to your point, he really ranked um, or cared about impact the most. Yeah. He was like, rapping skills, cool, but we can do a different list if it's just only rapping skills. And he acknowledged that Jay would probably be at the top of that list. But he was going off impact. My only question, because I agree with him on, on Pac being number one, mm. I just don't know why Snoop ain't number two. He's like Snoop. Yeah. What number was he? Sorry, Roger, did you say? He just like, mentioned it. I, 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 in terms of how he explained why Four. Pac is number one, like recognizability, um, impact, how, how long his music has stretched, um, I didn't understand why, why, why um, Snoop wasn't number two, but I understood why he bumped uh, Kanye down. He bumped Kanye down because he said Kanye is used writers, admitted it, and yeah. that kind of okay. put you in a different stratosphere. Right. The thing about all these lists is that most of the criteria that people have, they're valid. But I guarantee if I ask you to make a top 50 rappers list, you'd probably weigh rapping ability a little bit more than T.I. did. Yeah, I you mean, get me, and, mm -hmm. and, and 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 in terms of how Ti views it and his like, you know, him and his groups like ranking is like the impact matters more than everything else. You know, the only thing is like nowadays is is crazy because nowadays I just feel like we we let so many rappers get away with not rapping. Like th that's the thing. It's like we don't factor in the reason why we talking about these niggas. Like, don't get me wrong. Like all the all the other shit around it is cool, but. Rap is rap. Like I, I wanna, li I wanna listen to what you have to say, and like that's why I think Pac, Pac is more impactful. But I wouldn't say he's a better rapper. You know, Snoop, same way. Like I don't think Snoop is a better rapper than. Hmm. I don't think he's a better rapper than even Pac. But I think, really? like, yeah, I don't. I, to me, I don't think he's a better rapper than Pac was. I think they kind of in the same space where they have big impact. Was I think the biggest thing with Snoop is his longevity. Like the the, the way I would rank Snoop is like, of course, his longevity, um, his his impact and the music he's made. But like, he is a global like he's a global person. Like, there's nowhere on the world you could go and people don't know who who um Snoop is. But I think that's because it's kind of the records that he made. Is it a knock against Jay in these conversations? Because you know, I'm again I'm going off um some of the points Ti laid down. He mm -hmm. said. You go a lot of places, and, and if you told someone, hey, recite a Jay-Z verse, they might not know. But if you tell them, like, yo, but, recite recite a, a Pac verse yeah. or something like that, mm -hmm. they, they could go to a, a few that's, like, automatically off I, the top I, of the head. I also can't, I also don't want to scale impact to just how it is overseas, too. Mm -hmm. I mean, Big is at number three. Yeah. So. So it was, it was um, Pac. J, Big. Big, Snoop at four, Snoop and at then four. Ye at five. That, that's not, I mean, it, based on T.I.'s criteria for his list, I'm not mad at his terms. Like, I'm not mad at how he got that. But what it, you was about to say? It, it, it's, it's hard to really, like, get mad, especially when someone spells out a criteria and stuff like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Me and Wayno, we've had, and this wasn't even a topic. I think we, we, even, we even mentioned that, yo, we got to talk about this on the show at one point. Mm -hmm. But this preceded this whole conversation of Top 50. Me and him, we argued about... Was it Kanye? Kanye versus Pac. Mm -hmm. And... Yeah, I said... Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Go, no, 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 take it away. No, I said that Kanye is one of the biggest artists ever. I said that if he was... if You know, I, I not, God forbid, something happened to him, but this if he was the leader... This is stance to stop killing you. I don't right. care if they do or they don't. <laughs> they can't wait all right But now. no, but I said, like, if... if, if, so, if Kanye was to leave this earth today or tomorrow. And this was last year when I said that. I said it would be just as big, if not bigger, than, as Michael Jackson. Word. And, and Act was like, no, it wouldn't. And I was like, yes, it would. Like, just because I think his his impact that he's had has, like, superseded. Not not that I, I don't even want to say that he's not as good as an artist. I don't want to say that. But I'm just saying, like, his impact is something incredible, like, crazy. Because he could sell a nigga anything. Like, <laughs> that's the first person I've ever seen. Since, like, maybe, not nah, 50 Cent was selling it, but he junior us out of everything. But Kanye can sell any fucking, any idea, any idea how he's feeling, how he's thinking, and people will eat it up. And I think, that, but go ahead, you could. Uh, chime a part, in. So, so we were at that same intersection that I hear with T.I. as well. Yeah. Like, you were basically saying, I, I think, and, and if I'm wrong, let mm -hmm. me know. You were almost saying, like, in terms of impact, you feel like Kanye has impacted shit even more than Pac. Yeah, but, I did but, say that. But, but it was even, I think you were looking at, like, 
in terms of just music. Yeah. Like music from when he came in, the music he did that changed the trajectory of shit, what people, the context, the sound, the artists that were influenced, right? And, and I you can't really say that about pop, but I, I was looking at Pac's influence and impact on a larger global scale and even inspired a lot of artists, even though maybe they didn't sound like him. Yeah. That message, you get me? So yeah. like, th that was the intersection we're at in the debate. And like, how do you really gauge impact? Is it on a global level? Is it on how do you change music? And we were having that, it was a pretty heated, we were in the green room, it was yeah, pretty we was, heated. We, for, for like an hour, we was having that debate. And, and, and just off of that, it was so hard to debate. Imagine really coming together with a top 50 list and if impact is the, the top thing you're caring about, yeah. I could understand why even, even if he's not number one, mm -hmm. you would have a debate about anybody in the top five, whether yeah. it's Jay, um, Big, or even Kanye. Yeah, I just say this and say this in closing: like when you when you die, like more people people find out about you that didn't know you. Like, cause he said the same thing about Nipsey. Like he ranked Nipsey like in the '40s, and he said Lauren called him about that, and she was like, "Damn, forty something." And he was like, "Yo, like by the time he like I knew, but by the time everybody else found out, mm -hmm. he was gone." And I think that like. Nipsey's, the, the biggest thing about Nipsey is, is like, people are watching his interviews and things that he said, and it's making them go to the music. It's not the other way around. Right. Like, people was, he'd been rapping about this, the same shit he rapped mm -hmm. about on Victory Lap. He just, uh, he was doing it on Crenshaw and every other tape before that, but he just elevated it to a, you know, a little bit higher. But once he was gone, that's when people started to say, oh shit, we should appreciate him while he's there. And I think like, that's the reason why Tupac is so big. Like, yeah, people knew about Tupac, but like, when he died, that motherfucker went up on another level once he passed away. Cause people started going back. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Going back and listening to the music or watching interviews. And, and again, we, we could really go tit for tat about this whole list. But yeah. Biggie, had t was Biggie had two or three? Biggie had three. Three. Yeah. Is Biggie, like, again, if we, if we, if we put in skills mm -hmm. and then we're gonna have to knock Kanye cause he's admitted to have a lot of help when it comes to writing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if absent of that, mm -hmm. which I guess it's hard to be absent of that when this, the list takes into account everything, right? Impact wise, as much as we love Biggie, is Biggie is, is Big, is Big, is Big even seeing Kanye on the impact uh, on the impact scale? Yeah, yeah. I, well, I say musically. I, I say <clears throat> musically. Oh, the problem. Help. The, the, the problem Help. is, is that they both. His life was cut so short. Like, think about the music that he made by the time he was only 24 years old. Think about the 24-year-old rapper today. It, we've outlived, I've outlived Biggie 10 years, and when I listen to his music, it still feels like he's older than me. You know what I'm saying? And so think about the perspective. And, and no, he was, a, he was doing a lot of storytelling. I think Biggie was like a, a really, really good wordsmith, and he set the bar for what an artist should be lyrically. And if we're talking about the golden era or age and all of that shit, Everybody wanted to have that after he was gone because they wanted to carry that on. And I think Pac did that as well to an extent, but he wasn't as good as a rapper as Biggie. So I do think Biggie was influential when it comes to lyrical abilities. And that's a big factor, especially talking about rappers, right? Yeah. Rappers got to fucking rap. We want to listen to words. The beats is cool, but no, everybody loves when an acapella goes on, mm -hmm. right? I like this list, and I like that T.I. is actually defending this list. Yeah. I think it's one of those you can't just dismiss, be like, this nigga's a hater or whatever. Right. Like, <laughs> he has some type of logic behind yeah. it. Absolutely. I'm curious if you got any other calls about it discussing other positions, but I'm sure we'll find out eventually. Mm -hmm. All right, so over the weekend, uh, Snoop moderated a top dog entertainment panel at the Revolt Summit that was out in Los Angeles. Uh, so he asked President Punch if TDE was modeled after any other rap label um, and goes on to say that TDE is basically a better version of Death Row. Uh, so after the TDE panel, Punch hit Twitter to address uh, Snoop's comment saying, Snoop sat on stage in a room full of people and said TDE is a better version of Death Row Records. Humboldt. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like that, that's amazing. Like, I don't care how much you love Death Row, just take that for what it's worth. You know what I mean? Like, I think that TDE is another label, like, kind of like a Dreamville, mm -hmm. where they stay back and they rack up their numbers and they get their plaques and their awards, et cetera, but people are not really looking at the, the work that they've done or doing compared to everybody else because they kind of live in their own bubble. But if you if you break that bubble, they just as successful as you know, any and everybody in the game. I think that that's dope. Ooh, ooh, again, 
there's such a legacy and even just like the myth that surrounds um, death row is that when you when I hear death row, I be think some other shit. You know, like <laughs> like of course you think about the the records and the plaques and the success that they had, right? And I think if we're just thinking on a level of success, I think we could compare a couple of labels in terms of success to, to death row success wise. But I I do feel like they had, and, and I could be wrong about that because again I like, that wasn't the time that I'm here all the way in tune. Mm -hmm. um, it felt like they were like almost like the black sheep a little bit, like in terms of how the industry viewed them too. Like felt like people kind of almost in fear of like what they kind of had going on. Who death row? Yeah, it felt like there was an aura among them. So when when I hear uh, the better version, I'm thinking it's it's kind of the same type of feeling, except y'all not about to self destruct, and and you know what I mean. Maybe nobody's getting hung off the balcony. Okay, yeah. my punch. I mean, like you you remember too, like TDE is a label that has Bloods and Crips on their roster, the same as Death Row had. But the thing about it is, it's like, you know, Death Row was more known for ruling with an iron fist. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, and TDE is kind of like the other way around. Like, they, they're more of the ruling comes from their accomplishments as opposed to their antics. And I think Death Row was a lot of crazy ass antics. Like, you know, think about like, how shoddy was like the new Death Row. It ended up being the new Death Row so with Trey Wiggins. Yeah. They went to jail same as Death so, Row so did. So is the better version like the non-violent version? If, I mean, if, yeah, if, yeah. If, if that's what we're talking about, okay, I agree. I, I, agree. I think that's, I mean, I, I think non, not just non-violent, but I think that they're putting out product and music just as like memorable and just as like dope as Death Row did. I mean, you got Dre, Snoop, Dre's first album, Snoop's first album, a Pac album, a, a few Pac albums, but other than that, outside of that, what else is there? I mean, def, I mean, let me not forget about Dog Pound, because to me, they made a classic with Dog Food. Let me not forget about them, but outside of that, what do okay, you think even of? Okay, roster-wise, yeah, it's, well, uh, yeah that's what I'm, you, I mean, we, we, we think about TDE, we got Kendrick, we, who's a platinum artist, schoolboy. Dre you know, was there. Yeah, yeah, I'm just, but that was a very, very short time. Mm. We got, uh, we got Kendrick, Right? Mm -hmm. We got uh, Schoolboy, they both platinum artists. We got SZA, who's a platinum artist. We got J Rock, who's a. Did he win a Grammy? He won a Grammy award. He didn't win a. Oh, he's at least nominated. He was definitely nominated. Nominated. Got, uh, Grammy nominated. Sir um, just dropped. Sir, you know what I mean? You got Reason that's on the uprise. Mm -hmm. You got, you know, of course, like SZA. They have a, a more. Well, well, you know, like I, I feel like some of the names that that's passed through Death Row, even for a short period of time, mm -hmm. like they're such legends that, like, when I hear better versions, I feel like that's also. I mean, we living in the real time though. Like, you think about Ali. Like, you know how many people want they shit mixed by Ali? Like, you know what I mean? They got so. It, it, we won't really realize what TDE is, and I, I'm not. I, I don't think it's gonna have to take them breaking up or being over. I just think like because it's happening right now. By the time we get to next year, 2020, and right. we look back at 2010, and we see everything that TDE did from Section 80, or not even, I'll go back to J-Rock in 08, with having Lil Wayne on his first record, up until 2020, we'll see. Okay. I, I can understand why Death Row was used in terms of West Coast labels. Yeah. You know, you're not going to compare it to Bad Boy. You know? right. right, exactly, exactly. So, I get it. All right, actually, we didn't get to do your numbers yesterday. I usually don't end the show with this, but we might as well, before it's too late. Let's Would you it. mind? Oh, sure. Why do we have Waki Osiris on the goddamn screen, man? This guy's, like, haunting me. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, uh, so to his daily double, uh, Kanye West, Jesus is King, expected to do crazy numbers. Expected to easily be number one. It's going to be around 225 to 275,000 first week, which, to be honest, is a step up from his last um, solo project, which was essentially an EP. Yay, the seven-track project that dropped last year, which did 208,000 units. So, Were you expecting it to do these numbers? Um, well, I mean, he pretty much stayed um, the same, mm -hmm. right? Like, that was seven tracks. This was 11 tracks. Uh, he's increasing a little bit. It shows that his fan base is pretty consistent. And I think in music, I would want a fan base that's going to rock with me despite my ups and downs, mm -hmm. and always be there to support at least my art. So right. I think that's good. And pretty much last week, we had uh, Post Malone Hollywood Bleeding at number one in terms of albums. And it's the fourth time that an album landed at number Oh, it's the fourth time the album landed at number one. Young Boy, my guy, still doing great numbers. I think it was the second week 
80,000 units sold. And the baby Kirk is at number four with 49,000 units sold. Uh, my man YK Osiris is nowhere to be found. But, of course, he probably found a throne to kick it at, so he'll be just fine, okay? Uh, Gucci, my man Gucci whopped over. A lot of people said that he was going through a lot of these, quote, unquote, they're called antics. Or, um, you know, a little tit for tat or spat he had with uh, Angela Yee. But they're saying that it's because of the sales, but he did end up selling around, like, 31,000. He usually does around 50. Hmm. But notably, this time around, it, people pointed out to me there weren't as much like of a collective support from Atlanta rappers mm -hmm. and either posting or be like, yo, it's Gucci, he's dropping. So I don't know if that really affected the numbers a lot, but 31K is usually a little bit under what he's he's expected or usually doing. But he'll probably come with another track or, or another tape by either Christmas or um, Valentine's Day and probably back to his regular shit. All right. And also, Takeoff did repost it after a while. He said, fuck a blog. That's my dog. <laughs> okay. okay, good. They made up. Thank you, academics. That is our show for today. Um, if you have fan questions for us, please send them on Twitter at Everyday Strug with two Damn, G's. Damn, by Mad Quick. Feels like it, right? Yeah, we had some yeah. long, some long topics today. Um, yeah. What was I gonna say? We are at ComplexCon this weekend in Long Beach. We're gonna be doing a show on Saturday or Sunday. Still TBD, but we'll let you know soon. Hope you have a good day. We'll see you tomorrow on Everyday Struggle.